on the face of the Lamb or on the face of Jesus. The Bible says, they will actually beg and say, let the mountains fall on us. And the Bible says, the mountains will not fall on them. Why? Because they are not at peace with God. Do you know what that means? You can cheat people. You can swindle others. Make money and be happy. But as long as there is no peace with God, you will never experience that inner tranquility. Do you know in the midst, that's why Christians are suffering. There's what we call the theology of suffering. Even in the midst of the bar most barbarous atrocities, the whiplash of ferocious soldiers, people can still sing hymns to God. You can you sing hymns when, if there's no light now, you, you stop singing. But in the midst of pain, they were dragged with horses. Their bodies were ripping, flesh was ripping from their bones. Yet, they were praising him. Pregnant women were gored by wild bulls and beasts of all kinds. Lions were tearing them in amphitheaters. But they said, it doesn't matter. They were singing hallelujah. Wow, that's peace. You've heard people say that peace is not the absence of trouble. Peace is joy in the midst of pain. That's also peace. But guess what? Actually, peace encapsulates it too. Absence of trouble is also an aspect of peace. Praise the Lord. Yes. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. Shalom, shalom. Complete, perfect. Not wanting anything. Having enough to fulfill God's dream for your life. I mean, may the peace of God be with you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Point number seven quickly, right? Yes. Point number seven very quickly. I'm giving you points today so that you can remember them and share them with others. Point number seven. Now we have said that God took the initiative. Please read that final point I gave you. God took the initiative. Good. In sending the Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace. So Isaiah 9, 6 tells us that he is the Prince of Peace. Let me give you another scripture. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15. Hebrews chapter number 4 and verse 15. I read from here. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Hallelujah. Verse 16, see what it says. Let us therefore, on the basis of this understanding, come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy, and find grace to help in time of need. That's our compassionate high priest who discovered our condition and came to deliver us. See what the Bible says. He is the prince of peace. Hallelujah. You know what that means? Echo was, echo mug, UN, NATO. Everybody will only do their best. They cannot give you peace with God. Peace with man is not the same as peace with God. Is that true? You know the Bible says, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man can see the Lord. But listen, you cannot have peace with God. You cannot have peace with men. You can actually have peace with men and not have peace with God. What it means is, you can be accepted by men. You can be loved by men. You can be appreciated by men. You can be celebrated by men. But, if you don't have peace with God, that peace is false peace. The day you breathe your last and you breathe your first in eternity, you will see the God that you despise and you will be afraid. Unfortunately, there is no repentance in the graveyard. It is appointed once for a man to die. And after that, his judgment. And this is why Jesus took the death of every man. He took our place so that we now have his peace and he received our own pain and punishment. Guess what? On the cross, what happened to Jesus was hellish. What is hell? Separation from the Father. Is that true? Yes, Jesus cried out, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. My God, my God. Why are that it? Bodily suffering. They whipped him, lashed him. He placed on him a crown of thorns. Right? What came from him was what? Was blood and water. 
Listen. I pray that our family members and our loved ones who don't yet have peace with God in this season, they will hear the gospel and be saved. Amen. Jesus can return anytime. It is true. But some of us will cry when we get to heaven. Not just tears of joy, but because our loved ones were not saved. Do you know what it means for... Listen, it's not, heaven is not where you forget. People think you forget your sorrow, your sorrow. Then you even forget all your family. You forget everybody. I will allow the boat off for him the gift. You forget, you won't forget to. Guess what? In heaven, are you with me, my friends? In heaven, your mind is not suspended. Are you with me? You, we will know ourselves in heaven. Are you with me? Yes. I will see Temi. Now, not Temi. Never say Temi. Yeah. So, <laughs> bow with me. How are you? Praise God. I'll, me, I know. I'll just be moving with my, with my celestial robe and, and maybe like 40 crowns. They just hang them on themselves. And I'll just be like, praise God, brethren, hallelujah. I'll just be with David and Paul. We'll just be talking kingdom. Praise God. Hallelujah. Where will you be? Oh, will be <laughs> or you will just... And Deborah. Oh, with Deborah and Esther. <laughs> they will be doing makeup for you. <laughs> praise God, somebody. Hallelujah. 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 Please address that so that we can have peace. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 21. Praise God. This is a surprise. Second Corinthians 5, 21. I want to show you something from scripture here. If you are following me, say, ah. ah. Okay, you are following. Look at what the Bible says in Second Corinthians 5, 21. It says, for he made him. Is that in your Bible? Yes, sir. Who knew no sin, uh -huh. to be seen for us. Wow. That we might become. Wow. Notice, he was made that we might become. Say with me, he was made, he was made. That, we that we might become. So what was he made? To be seen. Uh -huh. That we might become the righteousness of God. Please go and it. Righteousness of God in him. What that signifies is that we were enemies of God from birth. See, as your papa and your mama born you like this, you were. <laughs> Somebody says, Well, you know, I taught you two weeks ago about babies because people have been asking. So, are you saying babies would just be born in hellfire? I already explained the dynamics to you. But this is it. Once you reach the age of accountability, you need to know. That your choices have consequences. If you choose God or you choose the devil, there are consequences. Is that true? Now, this is what it means. Because your nature is a sin nature. And you cannot, you don't have the power to save yourself. Jesus had to come and die. Now, if you reject the one that was made sin for you, it means that you will die in your sins. And when you die in your sins, there is, listen, there is no remedy for sin after death. Right in you are, going to, you are going to tweet it later tonight. There is no what, sir, remedy for sin after death. It's not like after death, then Jesus will now look for some. Have you seen churches that pray for the dead? It's because they, they decided to choose some parts of the Bible. It's an error. Praying for the dead does not make the dead holier or worse than the... Listen, you know, when people die, especially in Africa, especially in Africa, what do we do? We dance. We share rice. Akara first. Let bean cake move round. Akara Everybody take one. Then we now say, Ah, baby, baby. Then we see. Me, Bolo, let us see. After the candle night and all. Then everybody will now come and start writing hilarious things. They can say, Ah! Mrs. Ajengbele was the best woman on it. Ah! Some women will cry, Oh! Oh, ah! Hey, although she was the one, the letter said she stole our goods. But hey, oh, hey, hey, no, 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 oh, I call her the I She has moved. Listen, when you die, you move. You have, you have, some people think when you die, you are floating in the air. You know, many Yoruba Christians believe that thing. That when you die, your spirit is still moving around. It's even checking on the children. <laughs> superstitious churchianity. 
Eh hey, ah, some people say, ah, oh, daddy, ah, you are still wishing. Okay, this one is sensitive. Let me not say so that people are not offended. So some will even pray for the dead on their bed. They say they pray for the dead anywhere you are. May my God bless you. <laughs> no, it is appointed once for a man to die. Are you Bible students? After that is what? If you die, that's say well, uh, the song Paul. If you like Paul anointing oil, Paul olive oil, Paul Goya, Paul Jerusalem oil, Paul water. Bring the prop. Let them lay. Ah, uh, 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 let them make heaven. Let them make up so seed. Let them so seed on your behalf to a great man of God. That is why one of the greatest privileges God gave man is the ability. No, not ability. The privilege. To choose where you will end before your life ends. That's why I wrote, what, how should we live before we live? Because you can actually choose where you will end. I mean, it's God not merciful. Imagine you can choose where you will end. You can choose that. Me, that's only that say me and now going to heaven. You know that people like that say, "I want more." <laughs> but yeah, for for the some of them will later get born. The one that is still the darling. Mm. <laughs> Those ones. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So what we preach? What do we preach? In order for men to have peace with God, what we preach is not the gospel of condemnation. Condemning them does not give them peace. For example, they say you're a blatant sinner, you go to a fire. Okay, but that's true. Anyway, if you have that cry, you're actually a blatant sinner, and you go to a fire. Actually, is that true? You see, let's say things as they are truly actually. Do you agree yes, that a sinner will go to a? Do you agree? Yes, uh, if you, even if you're a country, a, the president of a country, and you don't believe in Jesus, will you go to hell? Yes. My people that say it, will you go to hell? Yes. Even if you're a prime minister and you don't believe in Jesus, will you go to hell? Yes. Even if you are, even if you are a choir master, why, why is there this choir master? Even if you're a pope and you don't believe in Jesus, will you go to hell? Yes, sir. Okay. Even if you are an undergraduate, I don't believe in you. Will you go to hell? Yes. Even if you are a daddy, I don't believe. Will you go to hell? Yes. Even if you are an old woman, I don't believe in you. Will you go to hell? Yes. Sir. You go to hell fire. Actually, so it's true. But uh, Jesus now died for you. But tell the sinner that there is hell and it's real and it's sure for you. Too sure like that. But that's not all. What we preach is not condemnation. What we preach is the gospel of peace. Somebody say the gospel of peace. The gospel of peace. Somebody say with me the gospel of peace. The gospel of peace. Somebody doesn't believe what I just said. Say the gospel of peace. Gospel Turn with me Ephesians chapter 6 verse 15. Very quickly. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 15. I read to you. And having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of what, sir? Of peace. You know what that means? God does not need to be mad at you again. Why? He put his wrath on Jesus on the cross. Jesus took that punishment on your own behalf. If you believe in him and call upon the name of the Lord, you will be saved. Do you see that? The gospel of peace. What do we preach? The gospel of peace. Do you know what that means? No matter how wealthy you are, if you have not received the gospel of peace, even if you have one million German shepherds, you will not have peace. Ah, now, somebody may say, ah, if you don't have Jesus, you will not have good sleep. It's not true. Oh, there are many believers that sleep very well. Are you here? Are you here? There are many believers that don't sleep very well because they are afraid that a demon, a demon wants to come and catch them. The demon is always in their bed like, like this. And there are unbelievers that, even if they are inside butter, drunk, they will sleep, eh? And they say, ah, oh, we, ah, we are awake again, up, up and moving, let's go. But you see, this is it. If you don't have Christ in your life, what you think you have is false assurance of peace. When the dust settles, everybody will know where they stand. Because that void, that silent anxiety, that turbulence on your inside that you cannot really explain uh, is a sign that you don't have peace with your maker. You can assume you have peace with God. There are people that clap for those responding to what I call. They don't have peace with God, though, but then they are clapping for those that want to go. <laughs> That's false assurance of salvation, which is no salvation at all. Are you with me here? Yes, 
gospel of peace. I remember, I remember the day I, 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 I received the life of God. My goodness. It was 2009, September. I've written about it in His Glorious Presence. Something interesting happened. Do you know that I, I went on my knees. I was always an interpreter for my father. I already told you the story, right? Some of you know the story. When I knelt down by my dad, I was crying like a baby. Do you know how babies cry? With hiccups and all. I was crying. Then I was, you know, just pouring out my heart to him. Suddenly, it was as if 10 bags of cement were, were lifted from my chest. I don't know how many of you felt that the day you, I guess yours you were just, you were just dancing and <laughs> me, I didn't dance. I was, it was as if, as if they literally, like, ah! then I now knew that truly sin is in weight. Heavier than cement bag. It's like an install, installed weight. It is set. Only Christ can remove it. If you try, listen, entertainment cannot cover up for lack of intimacy with God. You know our world, you can sit down with Netflix the whole day. Right? You know what people try to do? They try to distract themselves from the reality by entertainment. But for how long will you distract yourself? Praise God. Hallelujah. In fact, somebody said, entertainment is the substitute for lack of joy in the Holy Ghost. Somebody said it. Let's run a little more. Are you blessed already? Our last breath on earth will be our first breath in eternity. Face to face with the eternal God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, very quickly. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Miss Shefumi, I'm so glad to see you today. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Are you on your PhD already? Awesome. Very proud of you. Very proud of you. I remember back then on campus, she's one of, you know, my beautiful, my beautiful uh, sisters. And I thank God for what he has done in her life, the consistency and all. And I'm glad that you came today. Second Corinthians 5, I want to show you something, 6 to 8. So, we are always confident. I, see, I need us to read it together because you need to understand it. Can you read it together like evangelists? One, two, ready, read. So we are no no second Corinthians 5 6 to me. Read it very well. One, two, read. So we are always confident. No, it wait. So what gives us confidence is not uh, because they lay hands on us. It's not because we attend this church. You know, some people they pride, you know, there are people today who pride themselves in their church than in the word of God. There are people who believe, ah, we, we are these are might, we are an night. My friend, are you a Christian? That's what we want to know. Praise the Lord. Amen. Read again, my friends. Want to go. So, we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Verse 8. Now read it loud. We are confident. Yes. Well pleased rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. This Second Corinthians chapter 5 from verse 1 to 8, all right, contextually, is called the assurance of the resurrection. We are, we are certain that we will resurrect. Why? Because he who became sin for us died. When he died, we died with him. When he was buried, we were, we were buried with him. Guess what? When he was raised up by the power of the Holy Ghost, we were raised up together with him, to sit together with him where? In the heavenly places, far above principalities, powers, rulers, might, thrones, dominions, every name that is named in this world and in that which is to come. Somebody say with me, I'm seated with Christ in the heavenly places. Yes, we are. We are sure. Listen, the child of God is not guessing where they are going. We are sure where we are going. Are you sure where you are going? When you come and collect your people, Remember me, oh Lord. Amen. Remember me. Remember me. My back, baby. My friend, it's an emotional song, and we thank God for your life. But Revelation is progressive, and Scripture doesn't teach that. When you want to receive somebody from a country, you go to the airport, Abby, 
or the airport, at least. <laughs> well, I want to say something, but it's risky. Nigerians, where you go to the airport, and then sometimes you even carry the name tags or there about. Now, you will get there in Jesus' name. <laughs> you get there. The first time I entered plane, I was in, I was a boy when I entered plane, but I played in offline. But I entered. The guy entered. I scored shot. Some of you didn't enter. You only saw. They said, "Wave at it." You wave. <laughs> wave brother. Now, when you go, imagine the person say, "Please, when you, uh, when you come to the airport, please don't forget me." Ah. Uh -uh. Why did he come? <laughs> Let's ask a question. Why is Jesus returning? Number one, to come and receive the saints. Number two. To come and judge the world. He's not coming to condemn the saints. He's coming to what? Receive. Somebody say he's coming for me. Coming That's for why Psalm H to age. You are still the same. The Lamb of Calvary seated on the throne. And forever and ever you will reign. You will return and we will see you face to face. If I can change it and say we will rejoice when we shall see you face to face. Whichever one. When he's coming us we will not be ashamed. We will not be afraid. We will be glad. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So our own Jesus that is coming is not is not carrying gun. You say it's like a thief in the night. Understand scripture. He doesn't mean he wants to come and kill us. Say, hey, even Jesus will come like a thief in the night. My friend. <laughs> the Bible says every eye will see him when he comes. If he happens, will you see him in the night? Well, they say, Tonton, show me. <laughs> hallelujah. Somebody say, hallelujah. If you have to say, ah. Anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord, believe in his heart that Jesus is the only way to salvation. Listen, there's no other way to God. In fact, the Bible says, Jesus, speaking in John 10, he said, I am the door. If by me any man shall enter, he shall be saved. He shall go in and out and fight pasture. He said, anybody who tries to enter into the sheepfold by the window, he says, he's a tifo, he's a scam. Why? He's not legalized. He's not authorized to do so. So there are people who say, ah, but in that religion, they used to hear God too. Oh, God, that's not the approved means. Because a familiar spirit can do many of these things. That lady was following the apostles. And she said, these be servants of the Lord. They show to us the way of salvation. One day, Paul was greedy. Ah! And they casted out the devil inside her. The spirit of divination. Unfortunately, many are not grounded in the word. So the spirit of divination is actually what some people on the pulpit are using. But we, we don't even have discernment. Is it the person that hates Bible study that wants to have discernment? Discernment is both a gift of the spirit and a, 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 pre, listen, a, a gift of discipline. Are you here? If you interact much with scripture and study intentionally, your discernment will grow. Do you know it's true? Hebrews 4.12 The word of God is quick and powerful. Sharper than any two edged sword, piercing to the dividing asunder of the joint and marrow, the soul and the spirit. And he said, Designer of the many people are using money to buy designer, the, all the designer that they will still go and give false prophets. Why don't you use that money to invest in discernment so that you can spot it? Listen, some things are good looking, but they are not godly. Some sound nice. But it's not God, but listen, because a preacher owes a mic, wears a suit, and speaks confidently, does not mean his message is true. A preacher does not give authority to his message. A preacher is only a messenger. The message is greater than the messenger. So the authority of the preacher, the teacher, the man of God, is the word of God. Outside the word of God, all of us are the same. Are you here? Tell your neighbor, it's time to grow in discernment. Tell your neighbor, stop playing church. Tell your neighbor, stop playing Christianity. Tell your neighbor, be serious. Be serious. 